So today I start with a new topic and this is related to economic growth. And this theory, this is, that is a stage theory was given by W. W. Rostow. So this is also known as Rostow's, W. 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 Rostow's stage theory of economic growth. Now here, the stage theory of economic growth or the stage theory of regional development because when there will be regional development, there will be economic development. So the stage theory of regional development, this, what is this theory? In very short, according to this theory, that economic development is a process of what transformation and that transformation does not occur suddenly, just spot of the moment. It occurs through certain successive stages. We will see about the stages. And the proponents of this theory, they believe that this regular or normal sequence of stages of growth, that every economy has to go through a regular or normal sequence of stage of growth. The stages of growth, that is the stages of economic growth is not sudden. According to them, there are certain successive stages and through these regular or normal stages of growth, the economy of a nation or the economy of a region develops or matures itself. So Rostow, he was an American economic historian and he distinguished, we have been hearing about successive stages. So he distinguished five stages of growth. So according to him, there are five stages of growth and on the basis of these five stages or the countries, they will be experiencing these five stages of growth to reach to the ultimate stage, that is the ultimate developed stage. So uh, according to the stage theory, the economic development, it occurs through certain stages and there are normal or uh, regular sequence of stages. It is not that, that a country starting from stage one will directly go to stage five. There is a no regular or normal sequence of stage of growth. So it happens successively one by one and the various countries, they go through these development process. And these are the various stages. We will see about the stages in details. Now there are certain assumptions. What are the various assumptions? The assumptions are, first of all, the capital investment. According to Rostow, the development requires certain substantial investment in capital. Without capital investment, there can be no such development. Second is that for the economies of LDCs, what is LDCs? That is low developed countries. So for the economies of LDCs or for the LDCs to grow, what is the right condition is that the right, con the right conditions of investment has to be created because if the conditions of investment is not created for the LDCs, that is the low developed countries, then that country will still be in the stage one or stage two. Once the right conditions of investments are created, then only it can go through the successive stages. Next is that if the stage two uh, has been reached, that is if this stage, if the stage two has been reached, if this stage has been reached, then over here, if there is proper investment, if like over here you are seeing that for the LDC, supposing in stage two, if this is for a low developed country, then you have to provide proper investment. If only you provide proper investment, this then that country or that economy can go up to the further stages. Now, if, prop, if this stage has been reached, if at least stage two has been reached, then if there is proper investment, then that will lead to rapid growth. If aid is given, uh, that is if various economic aid is given or FDI, that is foreign direct investment occurs as stage three, then the economy at least needs to have reached stage two. So if that, so, so what is in short? In short, it is that an economy will have to go through successive stages. So it is not that, that in stage one, you can give any investment in the, uh, injections of investment. You can give that only when it has come to stage two. And if uh, there is more aid or investment occurs in stage three, then obviously that country, that economy must have 
already reached stage two. Now let us see the various stages. What are the various stages that he spoke about? First of all, this model, the, uh, that is Roster's model, he asserted that all the countries, they have a linear spectrum and they climb upward, upward from here, from stage one till stage five. So they have a linear pattern. So they will be climbing from each stage, from stage one, stage two, stage three, four, and five. So there's a linear pattern as they will climb up. So first of all, is this traditional society, that is the basic stage, that is the stage one. And what are the various characteristics over here? You see the various characteristics of this stage one. So in this stage, the society, the traditional society, here we see mainly a subsistent agricultural based economy or primary economy we see over here with intensive labor. Here, there is no scientific approach. The, the, uh, the, that is a population, they do not have any uh, perspective to uh, the outside world or technology. So it is a very, you can say, underdeveloped kind of a society, underdeveloped kind of an economy, which is based on subsistent agricultural economy subsistent agricultural economy where there is low level of trading because when you have only economy, uh, agriculture as an economy then what will you trade you can only barter your agricultural produce maybe rice with wheat but there is nothing you can trade and there is no scientific approach so this is a very basic underdeveloped kind of a society next comes the preconditions of for takeoff now in this stage the society becomes much more developed developed than the stage one, not very much developed, developed than stage one. Here, there is some excess, uh, there is some excess uh, profit from agricultural based economy. And that profit is used for technological revolution in agriculture. So over here, it was subsistent agriculture with very rudimentary maybe equipments, but over here, Maybe they are still practicing agriculture, but some technological revolutions in agriculture has taken place. For example, we can use uh, uh, hose and plows, etc. also for plowing. We can also use co combined harvesters for plowing. So technological revolution has taken place. So the society here, because much more funds uh, starts coming, maybe for, from technological revolution. So what happens, the agriculture more produce is, is occurring with more produce that is being sold. So excess money is being generating. So with that excess money, that is invested in some basic manufacturing uh, activities. And in this society, the approach over here in the earlier one, it was a very regional kind of an approach. Only with that place, related only with that place. But over here, the approach is uh, has taken place into a more national or international outlook. So here, because of uh, diversification in agriculture, because of uh, technological revolution in agriculture, that produce is being sold maybe to other nations also, or maybe within the uh, nation among the other states also. So that is a precondition. As more trading will develop, more money will be coming in. As more money will be coming in, there will be more money for investment. So let us see what is the third stage. The third stage, Rostow describes this stage as the short period of intensive growth. So this is a short term uh, period. So in this uh, term, what happens because excess some excess money has been generated from here because of ex diversification of agriculture, because of technological revolution, the quantity and the quality of agriculture rises and because that can be sold outside. So the money is being generated, profit is being generated, which is again invested for industrialization. Till here, we are not seeing major industrialization. Here, there is almost no industrialization. Here, only manufacturing just starts, develops. But here industrialization begins to occur. And when industrialization begins to occur, that results in what the workers and institutions to they, they are concentrated now around these industrial, industrial sectors. So you see our uh, separate industrial zones develop. As industrialization develops, so the workers and the various firms as they develop, so 
uh, the workers will be coming to these uh, industrial firms, etc. So industrial zones will develop. When industrialization develops, that will result into the rate productive investment. So more investment will occur, more money will be flowing from between these regions. So that again, because of these, more manufacturing sectors will be developed. So over here that you are seeing primary activity, here the development of the secondary activity, the secondary activity fully develops in this, uh, in this stage. So that is called the takeoff stage. It is almost like the flight. In the flight, the takeoff, when it is taking off, it is becoming airborne. So similarly, this is now that uh, economy is taking off. So the economy, which was in the traditional society, now it is becoming uh, like it is developing, it is becoming airborne. So this is a um, industrialization develop. So here we don't see agriculture, focus on agriculture. Here we see focus on more the secondary sector because the secondary sector is and the tertiary sector is most important for the economy that actually results in the economic development of a region next the fourth stage is a drive to maturity so in the drive to maturity this was a short period but this drive to maturity this takes a long prolonged period of time and what happens during this prolonged period of time here industrialization has occurred here more and more manufacturing sector has developed here industrial zones have developed investments have developed more production has occurred more profit has occurred so the income has also obviously increased in this particular takeoff stage with more increase in uh, income more increase in the per capita income with more increase in money being flown inside that region where there was no money earlier so with more of these what happens obviously the standard of living of the people residing in that zone obviously rises now when industrialization has occurred manufacturing has occurred there is more money flowing when standard of living rises then obviously use of technology also increases which is directly opposite to over here there was no technology over here no scientific approach but here use of technology increases and with that the economy also becomes diversified we are seeing over here the both here maybe there were the unskilled laborers were more over here but here both the skilled and the unskilled workforce rises human resource becomes more qualitative in this place so as a result of all these urbanization also rises we have seen over here industrialization occurring here we see urbanization or the degree of urbanization rises the degree of urbanization standard of living rises technology use rises etc next the last is the age of high mass consumption so Rosto, he believed that um, the Western countries, particularly the capitalist countries or more important US, US, according to Rosto, US has reached this stage, that is a stage of high mass consumption. And during this stage, that is age of high mass consumption, that is that has a capitalist system. So like US has a capitalist system. And that kind of a system and a capitalist system, we see more mass production and consumerism. So people are more consumeristic. That is uh, the consumers, the rate of consumers are more. The diversif diversified consumers are more. People want to, the diversification of people's wants are more. Over here in this last stage, because this is high mass consumption, in this high mass consumption, the use of technology is too much and people are using uh, the gadgets in, in their own livelihood. They are using this technology in the form of goods and gadgets. There is ample use of automobiles. Like for example, if you uh, see any developed uh, urbanized area, there each and everything is got there is a, there are various gadgets right from getting up in the morning there are various gadgets which they are using uh, or uh, for take the for the example if even we are using so there are various gadgets so this is the age of high mass consumption which is almost 
which is totally different from the traditional society where there was more emphasis on agricultural based economy where there was no money being flown in the uh, in the in the society but over here we see higher standard of living here we see capitalist type of system here we see more use of automobiles here we see more use of technology in our day to day life here we see use of technology in our day to day household goods and gadgets so these are the five stages uh, for rosto the stages of development and according to rosto that the economy of an underdeveloped region country can go has to go through these stages and ultimately it can come up to this stage that is the last stage that is the age of high mass consumption now there are certain criticisms for this first of all this stage this stage theory this was applied in a regional setting and not on a national setting on a only in a regional setting so they have visualized the region from an agricultural economy to an industrial economy through various stages of development and uh, in these stages of development they mentioned certain specific categories that is subsistence agriculture uh, specialization in trade crash crop farming etc now they observed that a non industrialized region may reach uh, like uh, a limit to its growth and then started start decaying like uh, according to them in short like hoover and fisher they applied this stage theory only in a regional setting and they have actually mentioned certain types of economy which are here these types of economy which that region must go through now according to them for a region to develop then uh, it has to eventually industrialize apart without industrialization without industrializing that region they cannot develop and according to them if a non industrialized region they start growing they will ultimately start decaying ultimately the fall down process will also start so this is the criticism that they have based their theory mainly upon industrialization so these are the five stages of growth